Hi folks and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video we're going to work back on the Lotus Elise. I know it's been a while but now we are ready to put the new sill on. And you might remember that in the previous video we took the damaged sill off and the sill had a lot of damage here in the back on the tip of the wing. We took it all off, we cleaned up all the debris that was still on the aluminum tub or body and now it's about time to put the new sill up. Now the way we're going to do this is very simple. First of all, we're going to trial fit again the painted sill. We'll mark it where it sits so we know exactly where we're going to place it once we glue it in place. We will take it back off and then we'll prepare the surfaces. We'll degrease, we use activator and then we'll actually we'll put some new primer up and let it dry. Once that is dry, we'll apply the polyurethane glue on all the different areas where we have to glue it and then finally we'll push the new sill into the polyurethane uh, glue and hold it in place or clamp it in place and by then the sill should be fixed. We let it dry overnight again, the sill should be properly in place, we can put the doors back and we can reassemble the whole side of the car. So let me push it inside and then we can start working. So the first thing we're going to do is to trial fit again the painted new sill and I have the new sill right here in front of me and you're probably going to wonder why I want to do this because I have already all the markings on the vehicle uh, before we started painting this new sill. Well there's a good reason for that because there is a bracket that we have to build in the back of the sill and new sills um, for some awkward reason are missing a piece of that polyester material uh, to be attached to the back of the vehicle so you have to order a metal bracket with it and I didn't know so I didn't got one but no problem I'm going to make my own aluminum uh, bracket and you'll see that in a few minutes. So the first thing we're going to do now is actually to trial fit uh, this piece uh, onto the vehicle. And since I have no bridge to put the Lotus Elise on to mount the sill I actually placed the Elise on my trailer so now it's easier for me to work on it. In the back of the Lotus Elise you actually have this little stud here, this pin, and that's where the crash cushion uh, goes on to. And I will of course glue it in place, but I'm not going to do it right now uh, because I still need to get to the back of this uh, to build that metal bracket that I mentioned. So let's uh, see if we can get the sill mounted in a decent way. Um, it is always a little bit of fiddling. All right. So the way to fit this is first to fit it in the bottom. There is a groove in the bottom and then fit it in there first. Then squeeze it in place here. Make sure it fits in this groove right here uh, at the outer edge of the door pillar. Um, because there are two grooves, there's one there and there's one below, it's the upper one where you need to fit it in. So that's good. All right. And then over here, we got to make sure that these things are going to fit properly. It fits all around, I would say, and um, yep, that looks good. I'm going to put a little bit of tape up uh, to hold it in place, so at least it's not gonna fall down. Now, trial fitting is very important uh, because it has to fit properly. This screw hole here is actually to mount the front clamshell, so you gotta make sure that this is properly aligned with that hole, otherwise you have a problem. And I actually use tape, masking tape, to show where the edge is of the, um, the new sill, because otherwise uh, you might miss it and it's not gonna work out. So with the sill almost in place, but it's still trial, um, gotta make sure that it fits right here. And this is the part actually where we had to cut out a piece of the original sill uh, because it was mounted underneath this part so here at the end we'll have to fix another bracket that will take that corner and cover that 
over here on the top, we'll have to put a lot of polyterrain glue on or bonding kit on because as you can see, we have a considerable gap, but there isn't much you can do about that. You can't really push it up any higher. Around the door hinge, everything should be fine. And that looks good. At the bottom of the sill, you have a groove, a quite deep groove, which we have to fill up with polyterrain glue. And the new sill has to fit in there, as you can see. Make sure that is done properly because that's very important. So in the back you have an aluminum plate which is covering the gas tank and you have actually holes in this plate and I'll show you that in a few seconds a bit better. And these holes have to align up with the holes in the actual uh, sill. And on the sill you have to put a metal clip. Now the aluminum part has to come above the new sill. This is the back area and the crash cushion will normally go in here. Uh, but I didn't put it in right now because if you look closely enough, you see this lip here, right? And this lip cannot be attached to anything. There is no metal behind it. Uh, I think that's a mistake from Lotus, uh, to be very honest, uh, when they were making the mold for these sills. And this is an original Lotus uh, sill, by the way, guys. So the only way I can hold the sill in place is over here on the aluminum. And the original one was actually fixed there. This one is not. Uh, but you see the little holes in here? That's where we need to make a metal bracket, right in that corner. And for that purpose, I'm going to use a piece of aluminum that's going to go on like this. And then I can bolt it down to the sill. Or I can rivet it. And then I can glue it down to the chassis of the Elise. That will do the job. So let's have a look how big that piece of metal has to be. I'm going to move it all the way up there, like so. And it's got to come up to here. So we need to bend a piece of metal and I used this square angled piece of aluminum. And the problem is that you can't bend any squared angled piece of metal. You just can't bend it like this. That it's impossible unless you guys know how to do that. I don't know how to do it. But the way I'm doing it is I'm going to shrink the metal right here. And then it will bend. I don't have to worry about this side because that's going to bend along with it. So for that purpose, I'm going to use a shrinker. And this is a shrinker. It's nothing more than two claws that press together and then it brings the metal together and it's going to bend at the end this piece. Uh, this is how we're going to fit the bracket but it has to bend like this. Shrink on this side, uh, so then this side is gonna start um, to move. So let me do that. I'm just gonna push the pedal. I'm just gonna do it little bit by little bit because you don't wanna overdo it. You see how this actually already starts to curve? And this is about right. I'm just going to give it a little bit more. Not, not a lot, just a little bit. There we go. That should be good enough. I supported the sill on the bottom so I can actually fit this properly now. And let's have a look. So we go into install it like this. And therefore, I need to mark the holes. So this is the final bracket and I have it degreased already and now I'm going to put some adhesive on it so we can glue it onto the vehicle. So now we're going to, so now I'm going to put this piece in place and stick it onto the uh, shell. No, it's not there yet. There we go. I'm going to use a rivet for that to hold it in place. Just have to find the hole first. I'm going to put a washer in the back. And now let's see if we can find the bottom one as well. Here we go. Place it in there, a washer, and now we're going to use the pliers, actually, to pull that 
into place. There we go. That's one. And now let's do the top one. So the bracket is now on and then finally uh, once we mount the real sill uh, with the polyterrain glue uh, we hold it in place like this with a couple of uh, clamps because that's going to be important that we actually do that. So we are about ready to finally mount the sill but before we do so there's a few more things we need to talk about and these are the products that we're going to need to bond the sill to the chassis. Um, First of all, uh, there's all kinds of products on the market that you can use, but the products that I'm using are those that are recommended to me by a professional Lotus dealership, and that's what they use, and I believe that they do. I can't get the original Lotus products anyway, so I'm sticking to this. Uh, what I'm using is a polyterrain glue. Uh, this is a glue that is used actually for glazing, so glazing in a vehicle that is the perfect bonding material. I'm using Carbond uh, 955 DG from Sudal, but I'm not making a commercial for them. But you just kind of apply that. You need, first of all, to degrease the whole surface. Now, once you degrease it, you will have to use a primer, and this is the primer for that one, and then let it dry. And you apply the primer with this little funny little thingy here. Um, that works perfect. Now, cleaning it and degreasing it, I'm going to use some typical uh, thinner for that, a cellulose thinner. But after that, I'm going to use this special cleaner and activator from Sural that goes together with all these products here. So, I'm going to take a bit of a close-up, guys, so you can actually see what these products are. I'm not saying that you have to use those, but these work fine. And if something works well, then I might as well say it. So here you go guys, these are the products that I'm using. They work real well. Polyterrain glue, which is actually bonding the sill to the aluminum body. The carbon cleaner and activator and the carbon primer. And you'll see that next, how I'm going to apply this. And this is the little funny thing to apply it. I'm not saying that you cannot use other products, uh, but these products work well. And if something is working well, why not say in it? I'm going to apply some Tech 7 so I can hold the crash cushion in place. And I'm going to mount it before uh, I put the sill back on. And I'm just going to align it, make sure it fits properly. I also installed the foam uh, in between the sill and the chassis. Uh, and I made sure it was on the same distance. Now these cutouts at the bottom of the sill are actually to hold a clip and then the aluminum plate that goes underneath can be bolted onto the sill. So that's one more thing we need to install and then we should be good to go. Here we go. And these clips uh, have to be fitted with the flat side on the outside and with the actual locking part at the inside. So now it's time to decrease all the surfaces and I'm going to be using, for that purpose, nothing special, just cellulose thinner. And after that, I will use a special product for carbon to degrease. Now, I know I already degreased it once, but I want to do it one more time. Just to make sure that everything is degreased properly because you don't want the sill to come loose once it's fitted because there is no way you can remove it intact and you can see that there is some stuff coming off um, it may actually be residue from the old uh, bonding kit but still um, you want to clean that very nicely So we're going to clean the complete vehicle, especially all the areas where we have to put the car bond up. And we really want to make sure that all that is really cleaned up. This is 
this is what we need to do. Oh, see that, how dirty that is? And now it's time for the cleaner activator. And for that, we have this little special funny brush. So we're gonna put it in and clean up all the surfaces that we're going to use uh, to glue the sill onto the chassis. These are the areas where we're gonna apply the car bond, okay? All right, so I think this is quite good. And now we'll wipe it clean one more time with an absolute grease free cloth. And we do exactly the same on the touch areas of the cell. We degreased the whole area we actually applied the activator and now we're going to apply the primer. I've got to shake it right and then we will go across all these black areas and put the new primer up and let it dry before we actually put the car bond itself on. And we also apply the carb uh, and we also apply the primer to the cell itself. All right, chaps, I let the primer dry overnight and it feels all right. So now we're going to apply the car bond or the polyurethane glue onto the different areas. And then we're going to put actually the whole cell onto the vehicle uh, for it in its final position. So this is now or never. Um, I already prepared a few sticks because I want to hold it in place in many different areas. I have another stick here and I will use a clamp to keep it together. And in the back, I'm having another clamp, which I will use uh, to hold things into place. Um, so I tried all this out before, so I know it's gonna fit. Uh, we've got everything marked where the silt should be. So we should be pretty good to go. Now, applying the uh, polyterrain glue um, or bonding kit, you can do it on the aluminum body, but you can also do it actually on the sill. Um, I don't know where it's best. I think I'll do it on the body uh, and then uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I might actually apply a few beads on the actual sill itself. Uh, you don't have a lot of open time, so you got to rush up a bit. Uh, so I'm not going to talk too much about this whole process. Uh, you'll see me applying just the beads and there is nothing to it. Just apply the beads where everything has been marked black and that should be good enough uh, to do that. So let me get on with it.
So now we're going to fill up this gap here. So I taped it off and I'm going to fit with the leftovers of this uh, car bond. And I really want to get it deep down into it. So the sill is now glued onto the body. Uh, it was a bit of fiddling guys and you've seen it. I clamped it in place in different areas in the back, in the middle. So to make sure it really fits properly. Um, and I using clamps, but I wrapped some pieces of wood in protective paper. So I don't scratch anything because that's the last thing I want to do. I had too much work on this car to start scratching it. Uh, the front, we filled up the gap underneath the window screen here with the same uh, polyurethane glue. Uh, and it all turned out pretty well, I would say. It fits nice and we'll actually see it once we put the final door up, how good it, it is. But I think it aligns everywhere properly in all the corners. Uh, so uh, it fits really flush and that should be really good. Uh, for the final result. Now we still have a bit of work to do. Uh, I still have to make the front bracket here. We'll talk about this in a minute and you'll see me doing it. And then we're gonna fit a front piece and see how that fits. We'll fit the grill here in the back and see how that's gonna fit because that's also a, a grill uh, that I got secondhand uh, because the one that was in there was totally damaged. And when it's all dried up, we'll fit the light switches. We plug up all the holes you still see with uh, rubber taps. And then we'll put the door up uh, and then of course we still have to fix the rubbers and here are the rubbers. Um, that's still a bit of work. Um, these rubbers are actually glued onto the door so I have to glue that back onto the door and I have double sided uh, tape for that. Uh, but these are all things uh, we typically need to do. See that's how the rubber would go. I'm not going to do this right now because um, I'm going to let it settle first. So this is the area where we have to build a new bracket because the original sill, as I said before, comes underneath with the lip underneath this part and then they actually put the window framing on top of it. But since I can't remove this, I now need to make a little bracket to reinforce this area. I'm going to use a piece of aluminum and let's measure it out. So we're going to cut it here. I will cut it here. I'll cut it here and I'll probably cut it right here and then uh, that should fit uh, flush. So we got the final bracket. I have the final bracket done so now I'm going to clean it up um, and um, then mount it onto the vehicle. Uh, I only need to clean up of course This side, there we go. Ooh, that comes off quite nicely. Just going to clean it up on this side. That primer is very important to have a good bonding. There we go. We're going to let it dry and then we'll mount it. Now here in the front, I have to mount another piece which I have on the floor. So I'm going to trial fit it. It bolts down on this side and there are two bolts on the bottom. Uh, and that's all what it is. So let's see if that's going to fit. And this is the piece. So first of all, we need to stick it in the groove below. And as you can see, these are the two holes through which the bolts are coming. So uh, let me stick it in the groove below first and see if the holes line up and they do. And then mount it up like this. And it's probably not right. No, that's better. So that's how it has to be bolted in. And you can see it fits nicely here and over here it fits nicely as well. Now on the part we just mounted, you can see that a piece is broken off here. So I'm going to make a um, bracket in the back and actually glue that on there to make it stronger. This is the top of the wing that was broken off on the 
sill that was on the car when it crashed and now uh, it looks pretty good so we need to try to fit in this uh, grill now and hopefully that fits just fine and I don't expect to be any issues with that because that's an original part and so is the sill so we need to slide it in the top there we go we slide it in in the bottom and then that will be held in place with bolts over here a bolt in the back and then that's it and then on the side here at the inside there is a little clip that i forgot to put and this is the clip guys so before you put the new sill up put this little piece right there i didn't do it so now i have to do it afterwards and it's a bit more difficult to get to it um, because i will have to drill a little hole in it and that's not going to be all that easy but okay it is what it is so a little metal bracket has cured and now we're just going to put the bead up and mount it onto the vehicle always the same work so let's see if we can push it into place and oh, that shouldn't be all that difficult To wibble it, wibble it a bit. Uh, while I was removing the rubber from the doors, and that's the rubber that was over here, I actually cracked the rubber. I broke it. I ripped it. I ripped it apart. Here it is. Here you see it. Yeah. So that is not good. Uh, but then again, the rest of the rubber is intact. So I'm not going to install a complete new rubber. In fact, what I will do. I will repair the rubber and then we'll glue it back onto the vehicle. Now gluing this rubber onto the vehicle, uh, you can see there's a groove here. Huh? So this is a groove and the groove goes all around. And in that groove, you can actually now put new double-sided tape in, especially uh, purposed for vehicles and gluing rubbers into place. This is double-sided, it's a bit foamy and they come in different thicknesses this thickness just fits fine in here and that's what we're going to do um this part here uh, where we actually broke it and i'm so sorry that i broke it not a big deal see we can glue that back together but for that you're going to need a special type of glue which i have over here and this is what we call loctite hy4070 that just does the job right. It comes as a kind of a syringe uh, with a double plunger in it. Uh, so it's a two component glue, it's a double uh, plunger. Uh, and then you have to squeeze it. And then it comes with different syringes. So you have about three or four of them. So you can actually keep using this um, product, uh, not only for one fix, but for multiple fixes. That's just gonna work out fine. Uh, I'm not going to show you all that in detail because that's nothing special. I'm not going to show you on how to tape in double-sided tape and then uh, install the rubber along the edge of uh, the sill uh, because that everybody can do. All right, folks, this is it for this video. I'm going to let the polyurethane glue settle now and then I will finish up all the rest. I'll put the little grill up at the little front part and then we'll, we'll put the f door on and the clamshell and you'll see all that in my next upcoming video. Um, one more thing I would like to mention to you is that never throw away old pieces. And here is I have an old piece of that old sail as you can see. And the reason I'm saying that is, you know, see all these little grommets that we have in there and little stops, rubbery things. Well, there's always going to be something that you're going to be missing on a new sail when you install it. So you better keep all the old stuff until you're completely done. Don't throw it away before you're done. So that's a bit what I wanted to say. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have to do it yourself, believe me, this is not that difficult to do. Take your time, work precisely, and it will work all out just fine. So thank you for viewing, and I'll see you in my next video.